Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Another psycho Karen opens our video today, in which our OP was unlucky enough to meet her. This time, Karen decided to question his disability and was kicked out of the store. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Another person assumes disability status for using a powered scooter. So, a little backstory. In my late teens, I had a trampoline accident that dislocated my ankle. We didn't have much money, so I walked on it dislocated for a month. A family friend who was a chiropractor put it back in place, but it was never completely right. Fast forward about six years. I later needed to have major repair work done to my ankle due to the damage the dislocation did. It was a three-hour outpatient surgery. I was released and sent home with two screws, three incisions, and a walking boot. I was not allowed to bear weight on it for two months. I'd been living on my own, but since I wasn't able to walk or shower on my own, I moved back home with my mom and younger brother. I think he was 12 or 13. It was December when I had the surgery. I live in Minnesota. Important for later. My mom, brother, and I went to that all-too-familiar big box store with Mart in its name. Now, I did kneel on a four-wheel walker with my bad leg and scoot along with the other. But it was tiresome, even for me, being a six-foot, 175-pound dude. And I wouldn't be able to carry items. So if there was an electric scooter to be had, I always chose the scooter. Now, being there was snow on the ground was also safer. Then I wouldn't slip and fall. My walking boot was covered up by my baggy pants and a couple really big socks, so it was hard to see I had one on. I go get on the scooter and start following my family through the aisles. I'm abruptly stopped by an older lady with the typical Karen cut. This was early 2013, before Karens were dubbed as such. She says, Hey, those are intended for people with disabilities and not for people to horse around. Now, in her defense, I had messed around a little. I said, ma'am, I am disabled at the moment. And Karen says, no, you're not. Stop lying. I see you stupid entitled kids writing these things all the time. And I said, yep, I can understand that. But just because I don't look like I've got issues doesn't mean I don't. How do you know I'm not asthmatic or have heart problems? How do you know I don't have... Karen interrupts. Don't be a smart butt kid. Get off. She proceeds to try and pull me off. I resist and hang on. Just as she was trying to pull me off, an associate and my younger brother spot the issue. I said, first off, I ain't no kid. I'm a 24-year-old man. And secondly, I do have a disability. Look, taking off the socks and pulling up my pant leg to reveal the boot. I just had ankle surgery. I cannot walk. Associate walks up and asks if there was a problem. Before the Karen can say anything, I tell her what happened. She also sees my walking boot. Ma'am, I just saw you try to forcefully remove him from the scooter. How rude do you have to be to assume anything? If you've got doubts, then let us know. We will investigate. Now leave him alone, or I'm going to ask you to leave my store. The Karen turns beet red and mumbles, sorry, and walks away. The storms people walk in life are not always obvious. As the old adage says, it's real easy to look at a person's front porch and think you see it all in the solutions. It's often 110% different looking out the same front porch windows from the other perspective. Karens be Karens. Just always be on guard for them. And our second story. You, you yelled at me. You can't do that. My coworker has a very loud voice. She laughs loud, talks loud. You can hear her from across the store. So this lady comes in and wants lobster claws. There's about 50 in the case, and she's pulling the old, no, not that one, that one. Our view from behind and her view from the front are very different. So my coworker says, let me come out front and you can show me what you're pointing to. Personally, I can barely see their body through the case and all the seafood piled in it, let alone which specific tiny thing they're pointing at. So she goes around and the woman is pointing, so co-worker opens up the case from the front and goes to grab the desired claw. The woman says, Oh, 
What are those big cooked shrimp here? And starts picking them up, touching them with her bare hands, inspecting them and putting them back. My loud coworker says, you can't touch the shrimp. Customer says, excuse me? Coworker repeats, we can't have customers touch the seafood. How would you like it to come in and buy cooked shrimp and people been touching it? She says, you yelled at me. You can't do that. I'm telling your manager and having you fired. We get a call later from our friendly customer service desk associate who says, some lady just said that coworker yelled at her and scared her because she was very loud. She also doesn't think coworker should have scolded her. She told customer service, she accused me of touching the seafood, but I didn't. She was out of line. B, I was standing right there. You 100% stuck your ungloved hands into our cooked shrimp and then threw them back into the pile. I had to throw away the whole front layer of shrimp because of this customer. Lying customer, I should say. Edit to add that I just remembered that she even said, there's no sign saying I can't touch the shrimp. LOL. And our last story. Crazy lady tries to call police on my dad's friend for being on her own property. Now, this happened many years ago and isn't my story, but my stepfather's. It's always given us great laughs when we think back to it. I thought I'd share. My stepdad was a very intelligent and versatile man. He worked for NASA in his youth, his father too, taught adults with learning disabilities, and eventually retired due to bad health and became a gardener slash handyman. During this time, he met and worked for a wonderful couple who just so happened to be multimillionaires, although you wouldn't know it to look at them. They dressed nice, but were always ready to muck in and get their hands dirty when needed. They're salt-of-the-earth people, hardworking, kind, and definitely don't take any crap. The wife swears like a trooper and often dresses down when working in the garden, etc., and will happily pop out to the shops in the same attire. Unfortunately, not long after meeting, the husband was killed in a freak plane crash abroad. He was piloting and testing the plane, ready to buy, when a freak wind took it and crashed it just after takeoff. He was killed instantly. His wife was obviously devastated and soon became a fast family friend of ours as my dad helped her with everything in her giant house. Think small, stately home with grounds and around the businesses she still owned, which just so happened to be in one of the most affluent areas of our city. So one day Pam, stepdad's friend and owner, asked my stepdad to help her cut back some bushes and get rid of some rubbish at the back of one of the sections of shops, with very expensive apartments on top that she owns. My stepdad, being my stepdad, of course agrees, so off they go and have been there a good few hours cutting down, pruning, bagging up, and getting everything ready to burn in the incinerator. There's been a bit of window twitching from one of the apartments while all this was going on, but they had a big job to do and were losing light fast, so had a deadline they were working to. Now, in my country, it's customary to not have any fires or burn anything until dusk. However, it's not law and doesn't count if on private property. This is important for later. So Pam and my stepdad were just filling the incinerator and had it set alight when the window twitcher suddenly bursts out under the balcony and starts screaming down at Pam and my stepdad. Pam, owner and Wonder Woman, SD stepdad, crazy lady. Crazy lady, what the hell do you think you're doing? I've been watching you for hours now and you can't be here. This is private property, my property. Stepdad, lady, Go back inside, please. We're not doing you any harm. We have a job to do here. Just let us work, please. Crazy lady. No, you're not allowed to be here. You're obviously not from around here. Just look at you. I'm worried you're up to no good. SD. Look, miss, please let us work. We're losing light and we'll have to come back tomorrow to finish it up if we waste any more time now. Goes to light incinerator again. Crazy lady screams, No, stop! How dare you! You're waiting till it's dark so you can break into my apartment. Plus, it's illegal to have a fire before dusk, so you have to stop. I'm calling the police to report your suspicious behavior and that you're having a fire and destroying my private property. 
You could never afford anything like this, so just leave and take your rubbish with you. Both of you are trouble and you, pointing at my stepdad who looks anything but English, he's been mistaken for Arab, Greek, etc. by Arabs and Greeks all his life. You filthy bleep, get away from my apartment. You're not welcome here even to pick up rubbish. And you, pointing at Pam, you should be ashamed of yourself even being in the company of someone like that. She even started threatening to throw things at them from her balcony to make them move away. Get away from my property! This is my apartment! You need to get away from it! Bear in mind, Pam has kept quiet throughout all this so far. Just keeps cleaning up and shaking her head at this lady's crazy insinuations. The incinerator had started to burn properly now when the crazy lady screamed and started shouting about calling the police and having them arrested. Pam had finally had enough and shouts, Pam, Listen here, you crazy effing bee! You go ahead and call the police on us. I'll have you arrested for false accusations and harassment. Crazy lady. Ha! Huh, you have no power here, scum. I'm calling the police and you and your bleep friend will be sent back to where you came from. That must have pushed Pam over the edge. As at this, she spun around and screamed at the crazy lady. Pam. Right now, I'm calling the police, you stupid cow. Not only have you harassed us, threatened us, but now you've pushed it too far. Listen here, lady. I can burn whatever the F.I. wants on this property, regardless of the time of day. I'm doing it at dusk to be courteous to you, but you've effed that now. This is my building. I own the whole thing, including the apartment you currently sit in. That's right. I'm your landlord. We've been here today clearing my property because it's overgrown and you hadn't bothered to do it even though it's a condition of your lease and tenancy contract. So as a result of the blatant disregard and breaking of your tenancy, plus your disgusting attitude today along with all the threats, I feel I may have no option but to not renew your tenancy contract when it expires, which is very soon. And I request that you start making other arrangements as soon as possible. The look on Crazy Lady's face was a mix of ashen and red humiliation as Pam removed her hat to reveal the huge diamond stud earring she always wore, even in the garden, and her signature hairdo. Crazy Lady's face dropped and she ran back inside, slamming the door and pulling down the blind. Pam and stepdad continued with their work, now pretty much in the dark, but the incinerator was still burning brightly. They both returned the next day to continue with the work that needed doing and not a peep from Crazy Lady. Pam decided to have an ask around of the other neighbors of the apartments and the shops downstairs to see if that particular neighbor had been giving anyone else problems. Guess what? She was. She was constantly banging on the floors, shop ceiling, during the days which disrupted the shops, and she was always banging on the walls of other apartments for no reason during the night. So Crazy Lady's tenancy was not renewed, and she was made to move out not long after the incident. Hmm. The justice is so thick and rich, I don't think I'll be needing dinner tonight. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.